So we start off with this idea of locus, which I'm sure is familiar to you. Uh, probably more familiar than you actually realise. All a locus is, is that. A collection of all points whose location is determined by some stated law. So if you think about it, every single number plane graph is a locus. Because its location is determined by some law. Y equals X squared. Y equals 1 on X. Y equals X cubed. They're all examples of loci. That's plural of locus, you know. I guess the difference is we normally see it written nice and algebraically to the equation. Here, it's written geometrically. So the locus of the point, which is always four units from the origin. So it hasn't got the equation there, it's just described it geometrically what's happening on the number plane. And from that, we need to work out, oh, well, what would this particular curve be? And there's different ways of doing it. You can think about it logically. If a point moves, so it's always four units from another point, in this case, the origin. So it's fixed to one point, and then it can move, but the distance from it is always the same. Logically, the shape we should get would be a circle. But if we're unsure, we could draw ourselves a little picture and go, well, there'd be an example of a point that's four units. Um, oh, there's another one. That would be another one. What do you know? There's another one. And you might be at this stage thinking, oh, it's a square. But then you go, oh no, there's another one. And another. And another. And you basically just keep plotting points until you get a feel for what the shape is. And eventually we go, oh yeah, look at that. It's a circle. Of course, the other way we could do it is going back to coordinate geometry. And what we do is just one of those random points, we give the coordinates x, y. And use, in this case, our distance formula. Because what we're basically saying is the distance from our random point x, y to the origin is equal to 4. And so I put that into my distance formula. x minus 0 squared plus y minus 0 squared is equal to 4. Square both sides and what do you know? We get the equation of a circle. x squared plus y squared is 16. So we can think about it logically. Or if we just can't work it out, we can go back to coordinate geometry. And that's another way of, of finding out what the, the locus actually is. A point moves. It's always five units away from the y-axis. So in this case, it's not a fixed amount from a point, but a fixed amount from a line. Fixed amount from a point to another point, we got a circle. Fixed amount from a point to a line, what are we going to get? So it always moves, so it's five units away. Let's draw a picture from the y-axis. So there would be an example of one point. I'll give it the random coordinates x, y. We're saying it's distance, and whenever you talk about distance from a point to a line, it's the perpendicular distance. So in this case, the horizontal distance. So if we're unsure, let's use coordinate geometry. The point that intersects at the y-axis, because that's a horizontal line, it would have coordinates 0, y. And we know that that distance is going to equal 5. So square root of x minus naught squared plus y minus y squared is 5. I end up with x squared equals 25. x equals plus or minus 5. So basically we're talking about a pair of straight lines. Why is it a pair? Well, when I drew mine, I assumed it was on the right-hand side. But there's nothing in the question stopping that point being on the, the left-hand side. So it could be x equals minus 5 as well. Now this one is also a fixed distance from a line. A point to a line looks like what I'm expecting is a line. But it's, ooh, it's not a nice, neat vertical or horizontal. Let's draw a picture. There's y equals x plus 1. So we're saying our random point is always 3 units away from y equals x plus 1. The common incorrect answer, when people just look at this and, and think about it logically, what do you think the common incorrect answer would be? Yeah, y equals x plus 4, because you think, oh, well, we'll just add 3. But of course, the distance is the perpendicular distance. 
So the distance of 3 is at an angle to the line. It's not 3 above the line. All right, let's use that perpendicular distance formula. Absolute value of x minus y plus 1 over square root of 1 squared plus minus 1 squared. We know that distance is going to equal 3. So I've got absolute value is 3 root 2. So absolute value equation, either x minus y plus 1 is 3 root 2, or the negative of that is 3 root 2. And we come up with our two lines, x minus y plus 1 minus 3 root 2, and minus x plus y, well, let's make x positive on that second one. There we go. x minus y plus 1 plus 3 root 2. So in fact, that vertical distance doesn't turn out to be 3. It's 3 root 2 above and 3 root 2 below for this particular one. Distance from the x-axis is 5 times its distance from the y-axis. Okay, so there's random point. We're saying... Distance from the x-axis, that would be a, a vertical distance, so it would hit the x-axis at x0. We're saying that distance is five times the horizontal distance. So if you like, I could call that horizontal distance d, which means the vertical distance would be 5d. What's the equation going to be? Well, if we're unsure, again, let's go back to coordinate geometry. So we're saying distance from x0 is 5 times the distance to 0y. So make sure we've got the 5 on the right one there. Square both sides. And there we go. y equals plus or minus 5x. So again, I've assumed the point was over here, but it could have just as easily been over here in the, the second quadrant. A point moves so that its distance from 1, 2 is the same as its distance from 5, negative 4. So now we're saying the point is always the same distance to two other points. What are we going to get? What sort of curve do you think? Yes, it will be a straight line. Let's have a look at the picture. There's 1, 2, there's 5, negative 4. He's saying we're going to plot the point such that its distance to these two points is always the same. So I know the midpoint must be one of the points. Okay, so I've just called that one the random one. But in fact, it could be anywhere on that perpendicular bisector. Easy enough to prove. Let me show you. If I was to put P somewhere else on that line, hopefully you can see what we've got is congruent triangles. Remember we said the distance, they were going to be equal so I've got right angle, hypotenuse side. So that point that's moving will always be on my red line there. That gives me a couple of ways I can solve this. If I realise then, ah, it's the perpendicular bisector of those two points, I could use that idea. So I'll find the, uh, the slope of the blue line, then the slope I want, because it's perpendicular to it, will be two thirds. And then I'll find the midpoint, 3, negative 1. I could use the point-slope formula from there. So, there we go. Of course, the other way I could do it, again, is just using the distance formula. We're saying the distance from the point 1, 2 is the same as the distance to the point 5, negative 4. Square both sides. Collect like terms. Uh, 4 goes into everything there, and we come up with the same line. So either way, however you want to think about that one, but we, we come up with the, the same answer. So let's start off with our look at locus, locus, however you say that word.